So let's have a go. Find the area of the region bounded by this curve here and the x axis. Okay, so in the previous question, I just kind of let you have a go yourself at the sketch and then we are picked up at the identify integral step. This time I'm going to do switch it around. So I'm going to sketch this with you. Once we identify the integrals, then I'm going to let you have a go and see if you can um, finish out this whole answer. So to have a go at this guy here, you'll notice it's a cubic like in our, set, our previous example, but it's a much more complicated one. So in order to work with this, we're going to use a trick from the first question, which is some factorization. Okay, so have a look at this. All three terms, x cubed, 5x squared, 6x, there's a common factor you can take out. Can you type it quick and tell me what it is? What can I factorize out? Nicely done, Sasha gets in for first, but everyone else is very, very close behind, fantastic. So let's factor out that x, and what does that leave us in the brackets? Well, take an x out of x squared, x cubed rather, you get an x squared. Take an x out of 5x squared, you just get a 5x, and then take the x out of the 6x, and you just get a 6. Now, I can factorize further than that. We shouldn't be surprised that there's more factorization to do because it is a cubic after all. x squared plus 5x plus 6. I reckon you can write for me the factorization, the whole thing in the brackets. It's not a, um, it's not a complicated bunch of symbols. Can you guys type it for me? What am I going to get as the two things in the brackets? Remember, it's a quadratic. Searching for that pair of numbers that multiplies to 6 and adds to 5. Yeah, very close, Mariam. That's a, that's a common uh, error to make. You've got to check closely for what you're doing. Well done. Yep, we've got the, the right values there. So the two values are 2 and 3. So I get x plus 2, x plus 3. And at this point, well done, Alexis. Uh, I've factorized completely. Now I've done this so that I can sketch. Okay. Now remember, just like before, each one of these factors tells me an intercept, right? The first one tells me an intercept of x equals zero. The second one, x equals negative two. And then this last one, x equals negative three. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do our quick and dirty sketch here. Remember, it's quick and dirty because we only need to see enough of this thing to know what it's going to look like um, so that we can identify the appropriate integrals. So. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit over this way. All right. So when I put in my three x-intercepts that we've identified, thank you, Hamza, well done. Here's my zero intercept. If I go roughly to scale, one, two, three. So there's my negative two intercept. And then there's my negative three intercept. Okay. Now, I need to thread the needle that goes through all of these and just gets a, a general cubic shape, okay? So what I'm going to get is a shape rather like, let's choose a different color here, rather like this. Wow, that's really messy, but you know what? It'll do me, okay? Because what I really need to see here is where is this region? Um, or in this case, as you can see, regions plural, right? So if you've drawn a sketch roughly looking like this, and again, if it's messy, no big deal. It just needs to look close enough to this to identify the integrals. You can see that I've got this area. Coming back to Yvonne's question before, this is an area under the curve. And then the next one here is an area above the curve, but in both cases, it's an area that's bounded by the x-axis, okay? So this is the area that I'm after, these two green ones together. I've sketched, but to identify the integral that matches with this, right, you have to be very cautious. Um, you've got one here, I'm gonna call this A1 for area one, and then you've got this guy here, A2, right? Well, to work out each of them, you've got two different integrals. So a1 is equal to, all right, let's see, I'm going to go from negative 3 to negative 2, that's my lower bound to my upper bound of the function here, uh, x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6x with respect to x. There's a1. But when I want to go ahead and do a2, right, this is where I have to use my sketch to say, oh, but it's beneath the axis. So this is going to be a negative area. I'm going to put that minus sign out the front. And then I put in the boundaries that are relevant. So it goes from negative two all the way to zero. And then I have, sorry, I'm just going to be a bit cheap here. I've got exactly the same thing that's being integrated. Okay. Now, this is the point where I'm going to pause. I held your hand through that last bit. I reckon you guys can work out these integrals and then get some solutions for me. As you do that, um, Rahul, this is an example of what I was trying to talk about before. Some students will look at this and they'll say, oh, 
okay, I've worked out, I've got to go from negative three to negative two to zero. And they sort of say, well, I, I can combine all those together. Don't write this. I can combine all those together to get my area from negative three to zero. And because I know that, oh, I want to make sure that some parts are um, negative and turn positive, I'm just going to put absolute value signs around the whole thing. Now, I'll go ahead and let you prove for yourself that that will not give you the answer. Um, in fact, you'll get a completely different thing. Uh, this is one of those places where you have to be very cautious. Absolute value signs don't just fix things. If you know where to put the absolute value signs, which is to say you're supposed to put them here, then I would say, well, you might as well just put a minus sign because if you could recognize that that was the part beneath the axis, you could recognize that a negative is going to get you the right solution. So I'm just going to say of the tens of thousands of times I've marked questions like this, when I see students throw around absolute value signs kind of um, indiscriminately, that's more of an indicator that they're not sure what to do. Um, whereas the best answers people say, oh, I know exactly when it's positive. So I just take the integral as it is. And I know when it's negative. So I know when to put a minus sign out the front. Thanks Rahul, hope that's clear. So let me get rid of this since it's not the answer we want. I'll give you, um, yeah, a minute or so to go ahead and play catch up, work out those integrals. And once you've got a number, go ahead, post it in the uh, chat and then I'll know when you're good to go. So, for starters, uh, let's have a go over here. I'm just going to be working on uh, this one integral. I've got the minus sign out the front, and then I go for my primitive function. So here I've got x to the 4 on 4 plus uh, 5x to the 3 on 3 plus, we saw this is the 6x to the 2 on 2, um, also known as 3x squared. And then I'm going from negative 2 to 0. Okay. Um, how are we going so far? If you're watching along, can you give me a thumbs up if that makes sense to you? Or give me a thumbs down or a confused face if you're, um, if you're not following along. Okay, Maram, you're happy? Lawrence, how about you, mate? You said um, you need some help with this area as well. Thanks, Alamda. <laughs> okay, Leslie. Um, so if I asked for a confused face. I don't know if that qualifies. This, is that just you're not happy with this or whatever? Okay. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to plow ahead. Okay. Hopefully it will make you. Yeah. Thanks. Lizzie. All right. Fine. I asked for that. Uh, okay. I'm going to evaluate this now. So I've got my negative sign still out the front. Um, what am I going to get in here? Well, I go top boundary, take away bottom boundary. Now in this case, my top boundary is zero and I've got, look at them carefully. I've got a, a zero to the four here, which is going to become zero. I've got a zero cubed. I'm going to mix a zero squared all becoming zero. So I get a zero here. There's my upper boundary. And then I subtract my lower boundary. Okay, let's have a go here. So I've got uh, negative two to the power of four on four. I've got five lots of negative two cubed all on three. And then I've got three lots of negative two squared close bracket. Okay. So Jason, if negative two was the top boundary, there would be no negative out the front. Yes, that's right. I would be switching them around. If I made negative two the, the top boundary, what I'm doing is I'm reversing the boundaries, which is the same as taking out a factor of minus one, which is in fact exactly what I'm about to do right now. I'm just gonna do it at a later step. So have a look at what I've got here, right? This is, I should say, there's actually um, a big set of brackets around there that no one caught, or maybe you did catch, but you were too polite to say anything about it. Um, what have I got here? This is a minus outside of f of b take away f of a. That's what I've got there, okay? So calling your mind back to the fundamental theorem of calculus, okay? Now, you can see that minus sign, I can substitute it in there, I can factor it out, um, or factor it in rather, and I get capital F of A take away F of B. So this is, instead of upper bound take away lower bound, it's lower bound take away upper bound, which is the same as turning the integral upside down, okay? So what I've got here is a whole bunch of negatives cancelling, basically. Uh, importantly, it's, uh, let me highlight it for you, it's going to be this negative cancelling with this negative. So that leaves me with uh, everything that you saw up in here, all of this. So let's drag this over here. 
Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and simplify that. So the negatives here, I've got four of them, so they're all gonna cancel out. Um, the twos, I get two to the power of four, which is 16 over four, 16 over four, which I think we all know is four. Um, what have I got here? Five times negative two cubed, so that's gonna be five times negative eight, all divided by three, plus three lots of negative two squared, so that's three lots of four. Okay, so I've got, uh, what did we say? Four out the front here, minus 40 on three, plus 12, so this is 16, take away 40 on three. What's 16? That's, um, that's 48 on three. Take away 40 on three. So this gives us the eight on three that uh, people worked out earlier, okay? So that took a bit longer because we were working out by hand, but let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Is that okay? Are you, Miriam, does that satisfy you um, to see how I got that? <laughs> yes, Lawrence. So when I went through this in class, I did want to show you how, like the important thing for me was not the, the number crunching. Um, the number crunching obviously matters because you can't get the answer without the number crunching, but I wanted to show you how to combine those. So now you can see the actual working. Um, you can see I probably just didn't want everyone because I think most people had already gotten to the answer at that point. But hopefully for you guys, this shows what my actual working will look like. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit long and messy and that's because I picked a slightly long and messy function to choose to integrate. But nonetheless, that is the solution. Uh, okay, so it was the very last step, just the 32 over 12. So all I wanted was, I knew that these two were the a1 and the a2 that I wanted to combine. So even though eight over three is the simplest way to write that fraction, I need to combine it with a five over 12. So I need common denominators, right? So that's why I chose to multiply by four over four. That doesn't change the fraction, it just writes it uh, with different denominators. So that gives me 32 over 12. 